Hello there, I'm Simple Tips, and today we're going to be looking at setting up hosting, uh, so effectively buying a domain and hosting. Uh, my provider of choice has always been GoDaddy, um, and like an idiot, I just configured the hosting and I hand clicked record screen, and you can only do it once. So I'm going to do the purchasing part. Uh, but I can't do the hosting configuration, I do apologise. Okay, so once we browse to the GoDaddy website, we're going to go to hosting. Now generally start with hosting, not your domain, because often you'll get a free domain included with your hosting. Um, so we're going to go for an economy plan, which allows you to host one website, um, and as long as you're not getting a huge amount, you know, a lot of traffic, this will be fine for you. The Lux plan is good for a lot of, if you're hosting multiple small business sites, uh, and an ultimate plan would probably be the ideal if you are got a lot of traffic going to your site. Um, so I usually stick with economy for my websites. Um, so we're just gonna add that to cart. Uh, they'll default to 36 months because it provides the best value. Um, Again, try and stick with a 12 month plan, uh, see how things go, and you have multiple options there. So add site, backup and restore, uh, effectively uh, this will be a daily, there you go, daily off-site backup. Believe me, the management of this is simple, you literally add it for £2 a month, and then you go in there and tick, yes, I would like to backup my website. And then all the restores are done on GoDaddy servers. So if you host your domain on a European data store, they will back up to the American data store or the Asian data store. Um, well worth it. Probably. Um, for me, I host a simple HTML website. So if anything went wrong, I could delete the, the site content, contents. Uh, and then re-upload it, so it's not a big deal for me. Uh, but if you're making a lot of changes regularly and users are making changes, probably a good plan to have. Um, site lock with malware scanning. So um, daily scans again, probably better if you've got WordPress and things which are likely to attack. But again, if you're just hosting a standard HTML website, you'll be fine without it. If you're hosting databases and things, and, and security is, is a is a key thing for you. Two pound a month probably worth it. Um, an SSL certificate. Um, again, you'll know if you need that. If you're setting up a website, you should you should know if you need that. But if you're just hosting a standard website again with no login credentials, no databases, you're not going to need the SSL certificate. So we're going to continue. Um, here we go. Good news, you get a free domain with order. So this one's going to be my amazing domain. What's been that's taken? Yep. Ah, cool. So I can have .co.uk. Beautiful. We're going to continue to. There we go. Cool. So that's your final value. You've got your 12 month hosting, your Office 365, the My Amazing Domain .co.uk. Uh, keep my personal information public. You might want to pay four quid a year to keep it private. Depends. Don't really bother me. Uh, proceed to checkout. Once you've done that, CodeAdy will do all the background work, send you an email when everything's ready, and you want to go to My Products. Once you're in the My Products area, we want to go to Web Hosting. Now this won't have your domain there. This will just say Economy Hosting Manage. So you want to tap Manage. Then it will prompt you to ask what domain you want to use. You want to choose the domain you would like to host as the primary site. Remember Economy Hosting you can only host one site whereas the more advanced plans you can host multiple sites so your default domain is just going to be it doesn't matter what generally you'd have it as an IT domain and then the additional domains would be the ones that you want to well would be the ones that you want to set up for customers or for separate parts of the business um, and then it will do all the DNS work, it will ask you what data store you want. The data store you want will be the closest to your client base. Uh, so if I'm, I'm based in the UK, I want to be hitting European servers. If you're based in the US, you want to be hitting the 
US servers. Uh, if you're close to Asia, you want to be hitting the Asia servers. It's quite straightforward. Once you click next, it'll do all the DNS, all the background stuff, create your hosting, and then drop you straight into this, which is called cPanel. Um, don't be scared by the Linux hosting. Uh, I prefer the Linux hosting. When I had Windows hosting, it was generally a lot laggier. You can manually upload your website if you really wanted to. If you go into File Manager, you want to go to your document route for simpletips.co.uk. Here, and if we come over here, this is what confuses a lot of people. Um, you have multiple areas to chuck things in, but all of these are restricted to the public, other than public HTML, hence the name. So when you're uploading your site, you want to upload everything into there. So for example, home.html. That's what it says. Beautiful. Um, changes to this is usually quite instant. So we can go edit. Edit. So we've got the HTML here. Let's find some text. Coming soon. Simple tips website. Let's save changes. Refresh this. Simple tips. Down here. Quite cool. Simple Tips website. Let's refresh. Boom, the Simple Tips website. Cool. Um, so effectively this is where you need to point your website. Uh, you can manually upload documents. It's going to be a slow process. Uh, or you can use an FTP uh, piece of software such as FT, oh, sorry, FileZilla. This is going to prompt you for your host, which is going to be simpletips.co.uk, a username. Uh, now, you don't have one of these at default, you will need to go into FTP accounts. Cool. Login, so this is going to be uh, public HTML at simpletips.co.uk. We're going to generate a password for this. Again, make sure you keep a note of these passwords because they add up. Public HTML. Okay, so here you can see we've got the home path, simple tips path. Um, public HTML path and then public HTML again this extra bit has been added by our login name so you only want to have that additional part if it's a subdomain so we want it pointing at public HTML so we when we upload our site the index file is in the public HTML which will replace this home path if that makes sense if we're creating a subdomain, so now, and we pointed that subdomain at hello.simpletips.co.uk, our subdomain forwards to a folder in here called, oh, I can't create, I'll add folder, hello. So that subdomain forwards to this folder underneath the public HTML hello. And then in there you're going to have an index file, which isn't this one. It's a different site. Your FTP account needs to point to that home. We just want to upload our main site, so we need to take it right back to HTML. If we remove all of this, it just won't work. In fact, I don't even think it will let me create the account. It will probably error. Yeah, no. Nah.
boom okay so you have to let me create it now cool um, and then this is the information you're going to want to plug into your file filler so let's do it for you simple tip.co.uk my username is public underscore html at simple tips.co.uk we know the password because I've logged it over there port 21 for FTP communications okay and then here we'll be able to see the hello folder we created uh, and the home HTML that we created and we can plop that somewhere on our PC of or vice versa we can upload a load of HTML files we have here we can push them up to there and we're good to go I hope this has been educational most likely confusing uh, if you have any questions feel free to comment uh, and I'll uh, hopefully help you as much as I can goodbye <laughs>